Well, here we are back in the engine room. As if by magic. I know. We were just out there. I, I should change because otherwise it's going to give away the continuity a week later and I'm still in the same clothes. Yeah, we, we don't film like six or seven videos in one day, but we might do a couple. We do a couple. It's all so, good, mate. What have, uh, what have we got today? Uh, turbo blankets or heat protection or a fancy hat. I'm not putting it on my head. <laughs> Fiberglass, it alert me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we did a little marketing video uh, for Funk on Matt Armstrong's car, I think, didn't we? Yep. Where I did a pull and jumped out and put my hand on a turbo blanket. Um, so this one's a little bit more technical, a little bit more geeky that we said we'd do for him. Um, so we use these on all our builds. Um, uh, this is for mine. So. I mean, we've gone through turbos before. I can grab the turbo out. But I even went for wastegate blankets as well, just because I wanted to try them. Um, so it's like a little mini blanket uh, that wraps around the... Uh, I've got a wastegate. Uh, that wa wraps around the, the valve part of the wastegate, so it goes between bridges a gap between the exit of the turbo and the intake into the impeller so yeah. whatever and it's to stop you can get water cooled wastegates as well um but this just helps the radiated heat coming up there's already a heat plate there anyway but this just helps because of course remember it's not just the heat radiated into the rest of the wastegate but radiated to the rest of the engine um so we'll the the biggest problems the twin turbo stuff has if we just if we just stick to it in that element because that's where we use them mainly i mean my friend chris uses these on like golf r's and s3s and stuff like that so you can use them for everything the main reason we use them is for the radiated heat you think at peak load on some of the biggest stuff we're seeing like 950 degrees egt um so when your exhaust pipes, especially on the DCT cars, sorry, when your downpipes run either side of the oil tank and then your turbos sit within a foot of it, that's a lot of radiated heat to put into some com into components. So it, it can radiate into the back of the gearbox and it can radiate into the oil tank. Now, we do a lot with airflow around that to help wash away the heat. Uh, and we do a lot to protect the oil tank and we do a lot to protect the gearbox. But as with everything, when you're stopped, that's especially when you've just done a big pull, and that's when you get the biggest heat soak. So this is why we work with Funk and we use uh, their blankets um, to help stop that radiated heat. The advantage as well is it stops the radiated heat across from the turbine side to the compressor side and even into the bearing cartridge. So you hear all these misconceptions that go, no, all you're doing is keeping the heat in the turbo. Well, you are, but you're keeping it in the hot side, which is what you want. If you start letting it absorb into the oil pipes, in and out, the coolant pipes, in and out, the bearing carrier, and the cold side, then you're adding more load to your intercooler or your charge cooler. So it holds it all in hot side. Uh, you do get some performance gain from that. I would say at our level is probably immeasurable or we would struggle to measure, but essentially hot gas moves faster. So your spool time's lower, um, which is why you see downpipes on naturally aspirated stuff sort of wrapped, lagged, um, because you get that advantage of faster gas flow out. Um, for us, it's the heat control, the heat control into the rest of the car and the heat control into the other side of the turbo. So that's the biggest gain, and it is huge. It is huge. Um, I mean, like I showed in that video, I can get out of a big 900 horsepower pull and put my hand on a turbo that's nearly a thousand degrees. So that shows you how how big of a difference it makes. It's going to get a little bit geeky because uh, Funk sent me some. I asked some questions, and they sent me some information, and it's obviously it's not my product, so it. It will feel like I'm reading a little bit. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So this is their Mark III blanket. Now, anyone that's worked with 
turbo blankets in the past know that once you put it on, you leave it on. Once it's been subjected to the heat and the materials have started to oxidize, they essentially, if you try to take it back off, it'll fall apart. So a lot of their work has been done in the fact that you can start to reuse them is probably the wrong word, but you, you it's not one-time use. So you can take it off and you can put it back on. We don't take them off. So unless we absolutely have to, we would normally lift the turbo assemblies off in one and leave a blanket in place. And that's what the recommendation is, is to do that. But their evolution of these blankets has meant the materials they're using has, has tried to stop that. And you can see now it's a stainless steel mesh inside. So it's a four layer struck, um, it's a four uh, layer construction. And then the final layer is this stainless steel mesh. So I mean, in the, old, in the olden days, it used to be bare fiberglass. You couldn't touch a turbo blanket without ruining your hands. So you've got, you can see, look, all the way around the outside. And then they use this um, sort of custom thread. Uh, I mean, they're obviously protecting their information, but you know, no one else, from what they said, no one else uses the sort of the thread that holds it all together. Yeah. So it's quite. Um, uh, special it's quite in innovative in the yeah. way they've gone about it yeah yeah i think they've really uh, pushed the boundaries on this i mean like i said we've used quite a few turbo blankets and they all feel like you know tog seven quilts you know really thin they do a job whereas this you put it on a turbo and it almost looks too big for the turbo it isn't it's perfectly installed on the turbo but there's so much i mean that's got a bit three quarters of an inch to an inch thick you, you know, yeah. there's a lot of material there to, to do the job. So that's what they call their um, their sort of their Mark III blanket. Um, and like I said, it now gives you the ability to, to at least give it a fighting chance taking it on and off. Um, what else they put? It, this or Funk R, uh, R-O-H-S, which is, uh, Restrictions of habit hazardous substances. So they're tested because of course, again, going back, the best heat protection was asbestos. So this is obviously to prove and to give owners uh, the reassurance that it's made from, you know, quality materials yeah. that aren't going to give you lung cancer when you sniff your crotch box. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so again, just another little notch on on why it is a superior product to, especially the crap you see on eBay. I mean, we've had customers turn up. Oh, I've bought, I've bought turbo blankets, and you're like, you no, you really you haven't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and these aren't expensive. This is what I don't get. Tell you what, mine are sixty two, sixty six, a hundred and twenty pounds. Obviously, I've, there's two. But that's not expensive when you consider that uh, ceramic coating on a turbine housing would probably cost you four or five hundred quid. Yeah. And I tell you now, we've used ceramic coating, and they do a job. No way is ceramic coating performing as well as that. I'll tell you that for now. We've got cars with ceramic coated exhaust. I can't put my fucking hand on them after I've been on the dyno. Yeah. They have a place. It, it does look pretty ceramic coated stuff yep. and there mm. might be instances where you can't use a fabric but nine times out of ten you go for this uh, some of the biggest um, uh, like the McLaren stuff we do with downpipes we, it's lagged with funk blankets so you can get that thermomet heat shield stuff as well it's like um, they like tack weld it on like the stock cars but again it's still a conductive material. So if you go and do a big pull, like all the Audi, R, all the R8 and Lamborghini headers are wrapped in this stuff, you still go and do a massive pull, you'll still melt your hand. There's still hundreds and hundreds of degrees. It just gives you that barrier to maybe take out a hundred or two. Yeah. Whereas these are rated to, if your exhaust temp is 600 degrees, then they're a hundred. They rate these to five to 600 degrees temp reduction from inside to outside. 
So that's massive. Yeah. Um, and again, 120 quid versus on the same turbo, probably four or 500 quid for ceramic coating and not as good a performance. It looked pretty, but it won't be what that does. But the funny thing is, is that like, like what the guys at Funk say and what, if you've got EGTs at 1200 degrees, your turbo blanket's the least of your worries. <laughs> you've got liquid piston coming out of your engine. <laughs> um, so yeah, from a, from a ceiling point of view, that's that's what they say then you're sort of down to your tuner i mean how many people would look at egts anyway um we do and we would normally install egts on certain projects so we can help tune on our exhaust temperature um but yeah you you get to a point where if you're throwing uh, certain combustion temperatures at the turbine the turbine amount you, you know you start melting turbos so yeah you're well within the parameter or the or the abilities of the blanket when you start getting to those those temperatures but will you be overheating the turbo cooking the oil the coolant or killing the life of the turbo well like we just went on to earlier in the video no because you're actually stopping the heat radiating from so say for example that is running at 800 degrees that's an 800 degree radiator. If I can now put a barrier there to stop the air in the surrounding area being that hot, then I protect the bearing core and I protect the intake side. So now my intake gas is a, my intake temperature can absorb less heat because when you compress air, it heats up anyway. So you help the charge cooler and intercooler by getting radiated heat off the compressor. You stop the radiator heat getting into the bearing core, so you don't overheat your oil or your coolant if you're using coolant. You don't put fatigue on the fittings or the lines, because normally you would have either a braided or a, a wrapped line in and out. So you don't put additional stress into those. So essentially you're putting a thermal barrier here. Sorry mate, let me just sit that. You know, if I give you a rough idea. It's not on properly, but. So now all, all of a sudden you've contained that energy, that heat energy in the turbine and you're stopping it radiating out. So, and like I said, you don't radiate into the bearing core, the compressor housing, the boost pipe work, the fittings and the lines, the oil tank on an R8 or the gearbox and the gearbox, Hurricane, or R8, or Gallardo. The frame, I mean, these are all hung off the, off a rear chassis. The rear bumper, you know, the more heat you can keep in the exhaust and help it get out without this glowing red, Yeah. you know, the more you protect the rest of your car. So it's a wide range of benefits. It's not just a simple, it's this yeah. and that. It's, it's yeah, yeah. a knock on effect and every component is that's, that's, involved, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, like I said, we. You've seen some of the stuff we do and the heat that comes out of the back of them cars. And then for me to be able to walk up and literally go with my bare hand, that's an impressive product. I mean, my cheat sheet was to understand what they're made of. Yeah. Because if you'd asked me yesterday when we were discussing this, I would have said, oh, probably good old fiber, fashion fiberglass and asbestos. You know, and it just, the materials these days are coming on and it tells you something when F1 you know, the likes of F1, F2, LMP are all coming back to fabric insulations and going away from ceramic coating or, um, or another conductive, like uh, thin metal insulation. Yeah. They, to be fair, they look good as well. They do you look good. It's, it's a nice. Yeah. So I went, as well. I went for carbon fiber, which is going to go great with my bumper when I finally get it fitted. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do, I can't even think of how many we've, we've done quite a few. Well, all of our kits, yeah. we put them blankets on. Um, but I think a lot of it is education as well. I don't think a lot of people understand actually what's, what's going on. Um, 
you know you get people that think it's a performance advantage because it uh, helps the exhaust gas flow because hot gas faster flow. You'll get people think that it helps with performance because it stops overheating or adding additional temperature into the intake air. You'll get people think that it helps, you know, especially on a Golf R or an S3 where that downpipe is sat on your bulkhead, that it stops all that, all those issues. And I mean, especially on, on those cars, you've got fabric lagging down the back of your bulkhead there. So you get pushing really, really hard. That's a lot of radiated heat. I mean, um, I think I as Motorsport lost the car last year where the heat off the turbo melted the brake reservoir and the car went up in smoke. Don't quote, quote me on it exactly, but I'm, I, I think it was something along those lines. So that's a safety device. Yeah. You, you know? So yeah, it's, and for what they cost, no brainer for me. Cool, okay. Well, it's a, a good insight in something that people possibly don't you know, understand that well yeah no one talks about it yeah do you know what i mean it, and it's it's quite unless you unless you run it fit it and then run it again it's quite difficult to explain how much of a difference the heat just the feeling of the heat in the engine bay yeah. how much of a difference it makes so yeah cool so um, go and check out the guys at front mode sport and they do loads loads they do tapes wraps um they do just about every turbo you can think of, just about every wastegate you can think of. And then obviously you get your downpipe lagging in different lengths and different diameters. You get the gold tape for your intake side. So we'll, we'll put a link in the uh, description, wherever it might be. Yeah. So, nice well, we'll just take photos of my cheat sheet, throw the video out, and we'll just post photos of that. Booyah. Happy days. So, no, it's all good. Nice one, buddy. Another geeky video brought to you by Ari Performance. Yeah, uh, I should have gone with that really, shouldn't I? Right, go again. <laughs> I don't want it. Can I just throw a valve spring in my face? You could do. <laughs> uh, right. Another geeky video brought to you by Ari Performance. Nice work. Good night. <laughs>